In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We acknowledge a Turrbal and Yagrapal people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, stewards on behalf of the Almighty Creator. We also pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging, and we extend that respect to all Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal people who join us. We endeavour to walk alongside you towards justice. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, tonight we begin the great three days of our Lord's passion, death and resurrection. The journey from the supper table to the cross, from the cross to Easter dawn. We are followers of his way, exploring his truth, encountering his life. This is the night when Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would betray him. This is the night when Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night when Christ our Lord gave us this holy feast, that as we break the bread and drink the cup, we may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and come at last to his table in heaven. This is the night when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, showing us how to honour and serve one another in love. This is the night for watching and prayer. These have established the practices of the sacramental life in our parish. We give ourselves freely to the demands of these great three days, confident that those who die in Christ will surely live in him. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Would you please be seated? In accord with the most ancient tradition of the church, on Tuesday night, members of the diocesan community gathered with the Archbishop at St. John's Cathedral for the Chrism Mass, having blessed the oil of catechumens and the oil of the sick and, the, and consecrated the oil of chrism. The Archbishop has sent them to every parish for use in the celebration of the sacraments. On this holy night, let us receive these oils as a sign of our commitment to the work of the gospel. By the laying on of hands and anointing with this oil, and prayerfully supported by this community, may those who are sick experience the healing presence of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. Blessed be God forever. By the anointing with this oil and assisted by the example of this community, May those who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism know that Christ calls them by name and makes them his own, and be strengthened by him to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Blessed be God forever. By the anointing with this fragrant oil, May all who are baptised and confirmed, all who are ordained to the service of God's people and this community whose house of prayer is dedicated to God's glory, fill the world with the sweet fragrance of Christ's gospel and be built up as living stones into a temple filled with gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Jesus said, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet.
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, then the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against divine love and each other and ask God to cleanse us. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
Let us pray. O God, your love was embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed the disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. A reading from the book of the Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear the word of the Lord. Reading from the St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. 
I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now, for those of you who were here on Sunday, I promised you I was going to preach a sermon in two parts. Now, there's a few fresh faces who weren't here, so don't worry, I'll fill you in. We looked at this phrase that we decided to take on this great Christian tradition of taking a pagan practice, cleansing it and conquering it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that phrase was, think global, act local. So we took think global, we rode in like Jesus, planted the cross on the field of victory. Now tonight, we're going to look at act local. Because Jesus is Lord of all, and if he's Lord of all, that also means he's Lord of the little things. Jesus right to the end of the fingertips. And so tonight, in this second and final part, I'd like to look at what the implications are of Jesus washing of his disciples' feet. Because Jesus acts local when he does this. And so how can we then act local in the same way. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yeah, the guy lying on the side of the road and a stranger came and rescued him. That's not the text we're looking at tonight. That's a different situation, right? Samaria is another country. They talk a funny language. They eat a different food. That's thinking global. We're acting local. Because tonight... Jesus is in a private upper room. It's just him and his disciples. There's no Samaritans, there's no outsiders. This is about as local as you can get. This little family, the apostles and their Lord, they're reclining. Everyone's guard is down. Everyone's comfortable in their own skin with one another. This is a room of locals relaxing with each other. Jesus then gets up, dresses down to something more comfortable and washes their feet. Now, I know for myself that the washing of the feet is about the most uncomfortable thing you can do in church. All right? Yep, yep. Now, I have no problem embarrassing myself by singing publicly in front of you or coming up here and talking from the pulpit. You're in this building, you're all my brothers and my sisters. But to approach the sanctuary, to take off a shoe and a sock, and then to allow the priest to wash my feet, this feels like a step too far. This is where that family connection begins to break down. Tonight is Maundy Thursday. Now, Maundy is a funny word. It comes from the Latin for commandment. And it refers to the fact that on this night, Jesus gave us a new commandment. This is the new commandment, that we love one another just as Jesus loves us. Now, we're perfectly fine with loving one another up to a point. Now, I'm not saying that we wouldn't 
you know, give each other a lift or pour each other a cuppa or if someone needed us to empty our savings account in an emergency, absolutely. I'm not talking about some moral failure when I say we're okay with loving one another but only up to a point. But Jesus is pushing us to go more local than we are comfortable with. When he said, here's the existing law and here's the existing prophets, love your neighbour as yourself, the existing law, the existing prophets. Tonight, he's giving us a new commandment, to love one another just as he loves us, as in the person sitting next to you here in church tonight. Because how local is local? Recently, we had the local elections. Now, if you were to take that ballot slip, how many names on there do you actually know? How many would you invite over for dinner? Or there's a certain Queensland town where you're not considered a local unless you're there for at least three generations. Even this local term allows us some sort of distance between each other. But Jesus says, love one another just as he loves us. And he gathers a few people around a table in a quiet room, takes off his outer garment and washes their feet. I think it's a good thing that feet washing feels uncomfortable. It should make us squirm a little because it's a reminder of just how intimate Jesus is with us and therefore how intimate we should be with one another. Easter's a big deal. In Christ's victory over death by his death on the cross shook the globe and indeed the whole universe. Jesus is now king over everything and everyone. And this king has come to his own people, called us his family, and brings us together with one another just as closely as he has brought each one of us with him. To act local as a Christian is to love every other Christian just as closely as we love Jesus and He loves us. So it might be uncomfortable, but the washing of the feet reminds us of the gravity of this new commandment Jesus has given us. And it opens the way for a deeper love to grow in this place. Friends in Christ, I invite you to come forward that we may recall we are Christ's servants and remember his teaching and that what is done for us is also to be done for others.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for God's goodness. The response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. On the night before his death, Jesus sat at table with his disciples, gathered to reenact the Sacred Supper. Let us join Christ and pray to the Father for all our needs. For the church on earth, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice, let us pray to the Lord. For those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us in this community, that more and more we may reflect in our lives the Eucharistic love of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For war and violence between nations to give way to God's peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the dead, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may guide their journey to the eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we give thanks for the lives of our sisters in Christ, Shirley White and Mary Grimshaw, giving thanks for their lives and their examples and praying for comfort for their families and dear ones who grieve their passing. We pray that God's holy angels will present them to you and you will receive them into your kingdom. Father, we come before you and present our needs to you, humbled by the Eucharistic love and generosity of your Son, the Eternal Priest. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that you accept this sacrifice which we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was handed over, which was this night, Jesus took bread and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh 
After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. In obedience to this command, Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us a memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.